everybody. Welcome to our, what is it? This is the fourth? Third. Third. Third, Third presentation in our series of um, educational events about uh, waste at Diablo Canyon. Um, oh, yay. Here comes our donation jar. <laughs> yay. Let's put $100 each in here. I was just going to say, we don't have a donation jar tonight. We were going to make a cookie box into one, but we have a real one right now. So if you would be so inclined to help us pay for the facility tonight, we would appreciate that. Um, and to give any donation that you would like to Mothers for Peace for our ongoing work to shut down the Elbow Canyon before 2025. Um, yeah. So... Um, I'm, my name is Linda Seeley, and I'm one of the spokespersons for um, Mothers for Peace. And what I am here to do tonight is to give uh, you an update about what's going on with the mothers right now. Um, as you all probably know, we, the Public Utilities Commission made a decision on, was that January 10th? 11th. January 11th, about... Um, shutting down Diablo. They said, yes, it can, it will shut down in Unit 1 in 2024, Unit 2 in 2025, at the latest, okay? So we know for sure that they will never run one second more than that, right? But we don't, we're not satisfied with that because we want them to shut down sooner. Now, I want to talk about a little bit about the conditions of the decision that was made. Um, there's been a lot of um, um, upset in our community because the PUC said to we, the PG&E and the other parties to the, the joint proposal had agreed that um, they that there would be a couple of, uh, there would be one thing called the Community Impact Mitigation Fund, I believe is what it was called, meaning the, all the money that would be lost to our community by Diablo shutting down. And it will be a great blow to our community because Diablo has been a huge um, asset to our community financially. And that's never been a problem with Mothers for Peace. We've known that all, all along, but our our problem has been that it's a very unsafe way to bring money into our community. Um, a nuclear reactor, two nuclear reactors, are not a very benign way to enrich our community. So what the PUC said uh, in regard to the joint proposal was, well, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> you can't take $85 million and um, wait, I want to make sure that I'm right about that money. I think it's 85. Yes. I always get those yes. stuff. Yes. Yeah, 85 million dollars to make up for the lost um, property tax that uh, Diablo has been paying. That that isn't kosher. You can't like substitute property tax money for ratepayer money. And so they said, I'm sorry, but you can't have that in the joint proposal. And so that was knocked out. And it's been a big blow to our community um, <clears throat> for the people who are, I mean, all of us are going to feel the results of it, but especially, I think, um, to the schools and um, the, um, the businesses and all that, the, the, uh, the ongoing impacts of it will, will affect our community. But... They made the right decision, in our opinion, because you can't substitute um, a property tax for ratepayer expense. It's just they don't, they're not equal to each other. And then they also said um, they cut down the money for the retraining and um, uh, uh, retention program at Diablo Canyon uh, significantly. In fact, they cut the amount they had asked for 1.3 billion dollars uh, to shut all together and they were allowed I believe it was 321 million dollars so it was like cut by 90 percent approximately the amount that they're allowed to um, get from the ratepayers 
we feel that for us, for our purposes, that's a good thing. In the sense that <clears throat> they're up against the wall right now. And they're going to have some big capital expenses coming up at Diablo Canyon uh, for replacement of old, they have a lot of old material, a lot of old equipment and all that stuff there that will be needed to be replaced um, in the next years. And if they keep ratcheting up all those expenses, it will not be in their interest to keep that plant open. So, and the other part that we feel victorious about is that in the decision, the PUC mentioned the Mothers for Peace argument, two Mothers for Peace arguments, along with Women's Energy Matters in the second one, was that Number one, because of these big capital expenses, that um, it may be more prudent to shut the plant down before 2024 and 2025. And then also, our uh, energy expert testified that we're gonna have enough replacement power for the amount of power they need to replace from Diablo Canyon. We've already got it, essentially, number one. And number two, for sure by 2020, we will have enough power to um, go into the grid from renewable sources to replace all the power that's needed from Diablo Canyon. And they and the judge, or the PUC, I'm sorry, um, noted that in its decision, that this is a matter that needs to be reconsidered during the IRP, which is called the Integrated Resource Plan. Meaning they look at like, how much energy do we have? How much do we need? Blah, 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 mix it all together and figure it out. And we apparently, according to the energy experts, we will not be needing as that power from Diablo. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. We think there's a good chance that it'll close um, before it's scheduled to close. And we're shooting for 2020, so keep that in mind. 2020 is our date. We want that plant shut by then, okay? Thank you, and uh, Molly Johnson is going to introduce our great speakers for this evening, and please don't forget about our donation jar. Thank you. And one, just one little thing to add to this is when they made that decision, the CPUC, it's not that they're saying that that money cannot be spent they're saying that that money cannot come from the ratepayers, that it needs to come from pg and &E and its shareholders. So there's the big difference. And when you're seeing these articles in the paper here lately that basically say, oh, the CPU say that, that this cannot be paid out. That's not what they're saying. They're saying pg and &E and the shareholders need to pay for it, not the ratepayers. 